Hello, I'm Charles from Charles End Photography. In today's video tutorial, we're going to talk about intervalometers, which are basically timer remotes for your digital SLR camera. Now, there are a few different types of timer remotes that you can get. You can get a little infrared remote for your camera. You can buy the proprietary brands like from Nikon or Canon, or you can just buy these aftermarket ones. You can buy a cable release, which basically works the same way where you just press your finger down just to take a photo. And if you're doing a long exposure and you want to lock it down for, let's say, a couple of minutes, you lock it up like that. Or if you want to actually program, if you're doing multiple exposures or time lapses, then you have to choose a intervalometer. Now, these are two types of intervalometers. They basically do the same thing, except that one, the cable is connected to the intervalometer and there is no break in the connection until you get to the camera. This other one here is nearly the same, except that the cable does come out. Now, this is not my preferred choice. I prefer where there is no extra connection. The only beauty with this one is that if you have multiple cameras with different connections, you can just buy different cables for your different cameras and still use the same time remote. And this one also has an on and off switch on the side. But I rarely use this because normally when I get home, what I do is I actually just take the batteries out of the intervalometer. But in today's video, all we're going to talk about is how to set up and use this intervalometer over here. So join me today as we sh I show you how to use this intervalometer. So this intervalometer, you can actually use the bottom button here just to take a normal photo. And if you're just using this, just like this, you actually don't need batteries in the intervalometer itself. Uh, the noise you can hear is actually my camera firing off because I've actually got it connected to this intervalometer for this tutorial. So as you can see in the remote, we have a delay. And if we move the little, the little blinker, you can actually see it just there. We move it across. The next one we have long, next one we have interval, then we have N, which stands for number, and then a music symbol, because it'll play a little sound as the timer is working. So we start with delay, and delay is that it allows you to set the intervalometer so you can actually go in and be part of the picture you're taking. So to set it, we just press this button down here, set, you can see it's blinking. So the first one is hours, then we have minutes and seconds. So if we wanted to set it for, let's say, to give you 15 seconds to walk into the picture, we set it for 15 seconds. Press set, and we walk over to the number and it shows you there a number one. So it'll only take one photo. So if we press start, you'll see it's counting down 15 seconds. That's it, it's taken the photo. Now, we'll reset the delay to zero. So the next one is long exposure. So this is, if you want to set a photo longer than 30 seconds, most cameras will have a maximum of 30 seconds. So we press the set button, it's blinking. So we've got hours, minutes. And for this tutorial, we're gonna set the four seconds, but this will simulate a 40 second exposure. This will just make the tutorial much quicker. So we press set, and here it actually shows us that we're only taking one photo. So. So we press start, and you can see it's counting down. That's it. 
that's what the long exposure is now you could set your exposure time to 30 minutes to an hour my Nikon has got a maximum exposure time it recommends of a one hour so normally I'd actually go to about 55 minutes so if I want to take a very long exposure of 55 minutes I would just go over here and set 55 minutes the next one is the interval now what the interval does is that it counts between photos so for example if you are coming to the end of a day or you want to take multiple photos but not one after the other for example let's say you want to take five photos just before sunset but two or three minutes apart so this is where you would use it so we reset the long to zero there now we go over to interval and we press the interval now for this exercise we will give it a five second interval and we'll come up here and we'll take five photos now because we're taking more than one photo we have to set our camera to continuous shooting if you don't do this then it will only take one photo it's all programmed all we have to do is press start see it's counting down it's going to wait five seconds takes another one and so on and the last one now this is how you act, I actually shoot time lapses so instead of that five second normally for my time lapses during the daytime they're set for a minimum of six seconds but you could set this to any sort of time you wanted so at the end of the day if you want to take one photo every five minutes all you would do is you would come over to the interval here press it and we're in the minutes here and you would set five minutes we go back over here we'd set this one down to zero and if we wanted five photos we'd come over here and we'd select five and then you would press start and it would take one photo every five minutes so you'd end up with a 25 minute time frame of seeing the day go by but you have to remember when you're using the interval that your camera must be in the continuous shooting mode if it is not you're only going to take one photo and we'll reset this to to zero now I find this works this counter works very good when it is new up to and over 100 but once these get a bit old in the counter here I find when I'm shooting time lapses instead of actually punching in the number of photos I actually go below one and I end up with this I click it to set and you can see I've just got a dash dash this basically means that the timer will keep on taking photos until either your battery runs flat your memory card is full or you stop it if I was doing a 45 minute time lapse instead of counting down the amount of photos that I needed I would just set my timer to the dash dash start the timer off to whatever my settings were up here and then I'd look on my watch or I'd use my phone and then I'd set a timer for 45 minutes when the alarm would go off after 45 minutes I would come over and just hit the stop button here because I have found in the past that this counter here once it's set into the multiples of 100 sometimes will play up and by playing up I mean you might set the timer the amount of photos to 250 you press start and it'll start counting down 250 249 248 247 it'll take a photo 246 244 243 242 and it'll take a photo it is not reliable you can either go out and buy a new remote or buy a more expensive remote or just do 
this simple little hack here that I show you and you just set it to dash dash which I find works quite well. Now this is a fairly cheap remote you can pick these up on eBay between about $18 and $25 or if you want to go to something much more expensive you can actually get wireless remotes that are around the $300 mark like the MyOps trigger which actually work in with your mobile phone and can do a lot more or the Pluto trigger which also works out at around $300. The Pluto trigger is more complex than this and also allows you to actually photograph lightning because it senses when a, the lightning hits and it will automatically take a photo. Whereas if we were shooting lightning the old fashioned way you would actually be using a timer remote like this and just be taking photos to continuously hoping to actually get a lightning shot in there. So you might get one lightning shot every three or four minutes but you've got three or four minutes of dead frames between there whereas if you're using the myops or the pluto trigger then if there's only five lightning bolts in 30 minutes then you've only taken five photos instead of 30 minutes worth of photos i hope this has helped you today and stay tuned for more videos if you like this video please give me a thumbs up or subscribe to my youtube channel thank you for watching